Coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, a 50 Ford with a nifty and meaningful nickname. I was on a ventilator for 30 days. Sure, it's beautiful now, but would you believe? It was burnt up in a garage fire. And a family project that became a wicked Willie's wagon. That's what son-laws are supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Plus. We're bringing it back to shape because after all the years, everything dries out. Old seats come back to life in Under the Hood. Two nice people, two nice Chevys. They're both fun to be in. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. A car show, any car show, is absolutely great with us. But a car show that happens year after year after year really gains momentum, really gets going, and really becomes part of the community. And that's the case here in Sugar Creek, Ohio. It's the 21st annual Fabulous 50s Fling. Hundreds of cars showing up in Amish country, all for us right here on Cruise In. Jim, when people think of 1932 hot rods, they immediately think of a Ford. The of Little course. Deuce Coupe and American Graffiti and all that stuff. I'd start thinking of the Chevy because yours is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I've always liked cars. I grew up in a Ford, but I became a Chevy guy early, 57 being the first. And uh, I was looking around for a 32. Uh, finally ended up uh, probably online in Naples, New York with this car. Uh, it was a 25-year-old restored car. Uh, bought it, uh, pulled it back to Ohio and uh, assembled it. And, that's what we ended up with. And when you bought it, it didn't look like this? It wasn't hot rotted or no, anything? No, it was stock. It was stock. Uh, looked a lot better than it really was. Uh, they usually do, don't they? Yeah, we get, <laughs> get the paint off. There's a few holes here and there, but we got it fixed up now. What's your favorite thing about it? Well, I like the color a lot. Uh, and I like the sound of it. I mean, I, I like the car. I like to drive it. The fact that Ford became so famous for its 32 and that Chevy isn't for whatever reason makes you wonder because this is a beautiful, beautiful car. Well, I think you could attribute some of it to the fact that uh, Chevrolets had a lot of wood in them. Uh, the wood rotted out. People just let them rust away. Where the Fords, I don't think had any wood in them. Have any wood left in this? None. Got all, rid of it. All steel. Fred, there's not much we like a whole lot more than an original car, unless it's an original car with the original owner. That's you and your coronet. How old were you when you picked this baby up? 18. An 18 year old kid? Yes. Picking up a 67 coronet? Yes. My mom had to sign for me, of course. They actually wanted a Hemi motor, and the, and the bank said you can't afford it because it was another $1,000. I paid $3,180 for the car out the, out the door, but another $1,000 they wouldn't give me, so. Well, it looks beautiful, well, and you've you. had it ever since. Yes. What's, what's been the significance of this for you? Why have you held on to it since 1967? Uh, I drove it for about five years, and then my brother drove it for a few years, and then sat in a garage for many years, and stored things on top of it, inside of it, under it. Um, it but then I decided to take it back out on the road and polished it up. And it doesn't look bad for a 40-year-old paint job, right? You had a first date in this car with somebody? Uh, yeah, my wife. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> yeah, good answer. <laughs> Trick question, right? And, and now, does this car hold any significance to her because of that? Yes. Well, it does. She doesn't just she say, doesn't, oh, yeah, there's... She doesn't like it, but <laughs> it leaves her alone on the weekends, but, you know. Now, as any original from the 60s, it's not perfect. Exactly. You don't want it that way because it ruins the whole original aspect, but there's a little blemish right there on top, what'd you do there? Well, I was had a battery explode and I was inside the fender in there and touching up with some you know, paint in a little baby food jar. Thought I had the lid on, the lid wasn't on. It spilled on the fender and I wiped it off but it, it removed the pigment. It's still shiny as you can see, but it removed the pigment. And that was my own fault. But it added a nice story. Yeah, yes it did. <laughs> Have you done anything to this, Fred? Mm, not really, tire, replace the tires. But you replaced them with? Fire supply tires, the original tires. That's what came on it, only these are Firestone's originals were um, uh, Goodyear's. How's that bias ride? Like this. <laughs> Every crack on the road it follows. 
It's not a nice ride, but I wanted to keep it original. And you plan to keep it for how long? As long as I'm here. Jerry and Wes, you have one of the most eye-catching vehicles here at the show today. I, I love it. I love what you've done with it. And I even love more the fact that it's father and son-in-law going after this thing together. Yep. Yeah. Guys, that's, that's, that's a lot of love there between a son-in-law and a father-in-law. How'd this come together? That's what son-laws are supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you funded the project, Jerry, and Wes did the work? Exactly. Now yeah. that's the way, that's the only way to go, yeah. isn't it? Right. How did it start, guys? Well, I had an uncle when I was a kid, and he had uh, one of these uh, Willie's wagons when I was all like eight, ten years old, and I always liked it. And that was clear back in the 60s, late 50s and 60s. So I always had, had it in my head to, you know, someday do one of these. So I found one. And, and you just happened to have a son-in-law with the skills to do it the way you wanted to. Ex exactly, yes, yes. We had talked about it, and, and we actually searched for a while until we found a body solid enough in this area. Been in Ohio, most of them that we found were rotted all the way up to the drip rails, but uh, this one came out of uh, Arizona originally, yeah. and uh, then it went to Colorado and then came here, and then I did all my magic to it. So Yeah, because you guys, it's not like you did a Chevy or a Ford. You know, you were looking for something specific and you found it. Right. Wes, where do you start a project like this and, and how did you guys work together to well, pull this thing off? Basically, we just kind of discussed the overall project as far as what he wanted to do with it. Um, tried to figure out the colors and all that, which a lot of that he just kind of left up to me. Um, trusted me enough, fortunately, that he just let me kind of go with my vision on it. Um, we ended up uh, starting with the chassis and once we got the chassis pretty well figured out, I dropped in a small block uh, Ford 351 crate motor, a Windsor motor, um, C6 transmission. We used a nine inch Ford rear end. I narrowed that up. Uh, we put a 94 Jeep Grand Cherokee front end under, under the front there, narrowed it four inches so we get the right track width, modified all the steering from the, from the newer Jeep and put on here. So we've got the power steering, the disc brakes, everything that makes it nice and reliable and drivable and you know comfortable so um, after we did all that we did all the body work paint upholstery wiring all that so and how long did the project take guys it took a while i had uh i started on the project i'd say it took probably almost seven years from start to finish but it sat in the corner of my shop for a long time because i was so busy on other projects and he was always telling me, don't worry about it, just work on it when you can. That's you know, the worst that's, that's thing to tell was, a guy. That's what he was telling you. Yeah, that's the worst <laughs> thing to tell a guy that's got a shop because it'll sit in the corner, so. And the name of your shop? It's Wild West Paint Works, uh, located in Dover, Ohio. I specialize in custom paint and airbrush work. Jerry, you imagined it. Is this kind of what you had in mind? Yep, it's, yeah, it's what I wanted, yeah. Yeah, I'm real happy with it. I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we drive it, you know. Your daughter married well, at least for your yeah. little dream. It worked out perfectly, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah, yes it did, yeah. Okay, everybody, time now for trivia. What do Mickey Mouse and this 1940 Mercury convertible have in common? It's a man by the name of uh, Mercury Charlie. No, that's not it. The correct answer coming up next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Ed, it's not too often that a car is nicknamed something that is so significant to a person in their life. Yours is. Breathless. Explain Breathless. Well, in 2003, in December of 2003, uh, I caught a flu virus that uh, they didn't have an antidote for and they didn't know what was going on and it shut my lungs down and uh, my heart. And they put me on a ventilator and uh, I was on a ventilator for 30 days. And when I woke up, I had lost my motor skills and uh, 
uh, short-term memory. And I was angry at the world. My son and my wife got together and said that I was always happiest when I was working on cars and maybe that would be the route to take. And uh, my son had a car show coming up and we're gonna look for one to fix up. Well, this here car was sitting way back in the corner of the parking lot outside in the rain and uh, have for sale sign on. The price is right and we bought it and it didn't look anything like it looks today, but uh, put a lot of time, a lot of hours in. And my son and I got back. I mean, we were closer now than we ever were. And I'm good to go. What'd you do to this car? Just about everything. Uh, took the motor apart, checked it all out, and then put uh, Eldebrock heads, aftermarket heads, and Offenhauser intake, and two new carburetors, Holly 94s. Rewired it with electronic ignition and that, and then uh, put a different transmission in it. And uh, in this past year, while well, we took the body back down to bare metal, we stripped her down. Neighbor, 80 years old, uh, did the retired. Uh, he did the seats and the interior for me. I took the doorknob off the, in the kitchen. It's an antique glass crystal doorknob, and I used that at the top of the low car shifter. So it, uh, cars have a lot of meaning to a lot of people for a lot of reasons, but I, I would imagine you look at this car with a completely different eye than you've ever looked at any of your other hot rods. For sure, I, I really do. It's not gonna ever be sold or traded or... You get, uh, in a very sickly manner, it's, it's, it, it can be a life-changing experience. And it was for you? Oh, yeah. Mark, this is uh, a very stunning vehicle. Nice. You take one look at it, and you can't not take a second look. <laughs> I, I, I love it an awful lot. 1940 Mercury Convertible. Right. And you don't see a lot of Mercury Convertibles from this era still out and about. No, there was only about 700 made. Came from uh, Yakima, Washington. It was burned up in a garage fire. Actually, my wife's mom found it out there, and uh, her family still lives out that area. So uh, we sent her brother to go look at it, see how bad it was damaged. And he said it wasn't that bad. So me and a friend took off with an open trailer and hauled it back home to Ohio. Where do you start with a project like that, especially a car that's had some damage? Um, actually, when we got it back home, took it down to Cincinnati and had the car dipped. And uh, when it came back from the dipper, it was like it was just built yesterday. Beautiful shape, not a pinhole rust in it anywhere. It, it was fantastic. Were you stunned? I was stunned, yep. It uh, kind of dictated how the rest of the build would go because the body was perfect. So, What are your favorite features about it? What did you do to this that you really love? Um, probably the suspension, the air ride. It just glides down the road. Everything on the body including all the chrome and, and all that, I decided to leave it as it was in 1940. All the suspension, the drivetrain, I wanted it updated so I could drive this car cross country if I wanted to and go into just about any parts store and find the parts that I needed to fix it if it would break down. And the speedometer stock, it was made by the Waltham Watch Company. Um, the actual numbers on it are designed after the uh, Mickey Mouse watch from that same era. So if you look at a Mickey Mouse watch, the numbers on the dial and the numbers on the speedometer, they're identical. And that was in this car? Yes, yep. And how about the knob on your gear shift? Okay, that uh, was given to me as a birthday present by my wife last year. <clears throat> it's a Mercury head and it came from uh, Texas, a man by the name of uh, Mercury Charlie makes them. Congratulations from a uh, burned out car in a garage to absolute beauty. Oh, thank you. Time to fix your seat. The vinyl is a little bit cold and to stretch it, it's gonna be a little bit hard. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. 
RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. We are thrilled to be joined by the guru of upholstery here at RK Motors Restoration, Ralph Farinacci. Ralph, going to take us through a couple of steps on something you can do at home to work on the upholstery. What are we going to do today, Ralph? Uh, today we're going to install cushion covers on a 69 Camaro seat. Uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to take a steam, and I love how, Ralph, this doesn't look good right now. No. Very <laughs> ugly. Not what you want to sit on. And what we're going to do is put some moisture back into the foam, which... You're, you're literally putting steam into the old foam cushion. Right. We're bringing it back to shape because after all the years, everything dries out. So now we're bringing it back to where it's going to be soft. So when you sit on the seat, it's going to it's going to have cushion to it instead of being hard like a rock like a lot of old seeds get. And my thought, Ralph, would be the steam putting moisture in it, you're, it's going to get moldy, but that's not the case at all. No, not at all. None whatsoever because, believe me, once you put this in, it makes it nice and soft. The moisture it goes feels, right into it. It feels like new foam. Right, exactly. And, you know, sometimes you will get cars where the foam from down south, the foams will be more, you know, dried out where you have to replace the foam. Because of the heat, Ralph? Right, the, the heat deteriorates all the foam down, and this is old latex foam, and the reason why it, you lose all the moisture. New foams are not made out of latex foam. That's a nasty looking machine, by the way, Ralph. Yeah, it'll burn. It's, it's not something you want to play with. Now, these are our reproduction co covers of factory that are reproduced by a couple different companies. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take and bring them down into the sides here. And you're doing what now? We're using the hog rings and we're putting the listings down in here. And this is what gives you the tufted look inside the seat. There's wires down inside the, inside the foams here. And all we're doing is attaching it to it, which you've got a pair of hog ring pliers and hog rings, which they've been doing this since they started making seats, hog rings. If you have a nice warm day, you can lay the covers outside in the sun which avoids from warming them up like this. And now you're just shooting steam underneath the cover to loosen it up. Yeah, just to, you know, because it is, the vinyl is a little bit cold and to stretch it, it's gonna be a little bit hard. And by doing this, what we're doing is loosening up the vinyl to give it a nice stretch, even stretch on it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it down. Now it's looking like a car seat. Okay. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's just putting it back exactly where it was. And then rolling the cover over. And then we'll flip it. And being a GM, GMs clip into a channel. All cars are made differently. Some ring down here and some just clipping channels. See, it looks 1969 from this side, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, it does. going to take in the back flap. And you're clipping those right to what? To the springs. To where the spring underneath. Yeah, exactly where the factory used to attach them to. As you can see, we got our cushion cover installed. That and looks now all you got to do is put our trim on. A uh, little trick when you got the nub sticking through, you take your pair of side cutters, your dikes, just tap around it. This way you're not cutting a hole too big and you're it comes right through. And then you got your cushion cover all done. And then we could go on to doing our backrest, which will be the same thing. Even if you don't have a steamer, it's, it's no big deal to put the seats together whatsoever. This just help, you know, benefits making the foam soft again. You could get new foam if, you're, you, know, if you need to, because they sell the foam with the covers. 
Usually when you start something like this on a backrest, you're gonna center it up. And again with the clips. Those are just big, heavy duty just, staples, really. You like dealing with vinyl, Ralph? Um, yeah, vinyl vinyl is an easy product to work with. Cloth is very easy. The hardest thing is working with leathers because you can't use steam with leather. It's like it would be like taking steam to your skin. It would, it would wrinkle and draw up. The main thing is when you take one apart, make sure you observe how you take it apart and always put it back together the same way you took something apart. You just gotta pull them tight like they're supposed to be. And you got your front seats done. Beautiful. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to the fabulous 50s fling in Sugar Creek on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Mr. and Mrs. Carlson, we love the Chevrolets. They're terrific. And Mr. Carlson, you did them yourself. You put them back together? I did. This one, the 1932. 32. How'd you get started on this project? I rebuilt it in my garage. I like Chevys. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like about the 32 the most? I like the, uh, the style of it. And it's a six cylinder engine. And a lot of cars in the early years was four cylinder. And this is a six cylinder overhead valve engine. And, runs you had, real nice. and you had some support going through it because obviously you can't collect old cars unless Mrs. Carlson says it's okay. That's right. <laughs> Why are you all for it, Mrs. Carlson? It's fun to ride around in them and they're nice look. The only thing I didn't like, he took over our patio area with a swing. Oh no. And <laughs> closed it in to put one of the old cars in and gave our swing to our daughter. Mr. Carlson. <laughs> then I had to build him a porch to put it on. <laughs> so the car project had to be delayed because you had to build the porch. Yeah. <laughs> How about the 41? I bought it from a friend. I've had the 41. That's probably had it 40 years, haven't I? Oh, you've had it a long time. Which one's more fun to drive? Oh, uh, probably the 32. I like the 41, but I like either one of them. They're both fun to be in. Well, you did a nice job restoring both of them. I'm sorry about the swing, Mrs. Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> but, I, but I like the benefits. We got, our son got us a glider then, so it works out perfect. Oh. We can set in that. What a nice boy. Yes, yeah, he's huh? a nice boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can sure see why this car show has been going on year after year after year here in Sugar Creek, the 21st annual Fabulous 50s Fling. We'd like to thank Mr. Dick Lom for bringing us down an absolutely wonderful event, and he was a terrific host. We had a great time here in Sugar Creek. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motor Charlotte.